also going back to that almost spite-fueled passion, which <laughs> I think is great because you know you, you you say yes, people said, hey, go ahead, go quote follow your bliss. You won't make it, but do it anyway. Mm -hmm. They said it back home. They mm -hmm. said it here. How does one keep that engine going without becoming too bitter? Because I think that's a great. We hear it all the time. Whatever creative endeavor, oh, we well, can't really make money at it, but yeah, try it. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, like our instrument, in a lot of ways, it's a muscle, and you, you you keep strengthening it. And once you invest in that, you know, when you set your course or strike the canvas that you're going to stick, um, you begin to reinforce that muscle, and hopefully. Um, the business responds enough or opportunity responds enough um, that you're, you're engaged in the industry. Uh, I call it a membrane. And for a long time we slide through it and we get to visit and do a little work and then we get pushed back out. So it takes a long time to get inside the membrane and stay inside the membrane. Um, but I, th in answer to your question about the, the bitterness, you know, it's filled with disappointment. It, it just is. Uh, every time I really want a job, and it's the hardest thing as an actor, because when, when I really want a job, I squeeze the sawdust out of the end of the bat. I try too hard. And I get in my own way. And they, the, one of the first things they say in acting school is leave yourself alone. Don't get in your own way. Trust yourself, you know. And um, it, it, it's hard not to be, um, I, I, hopefully you move from, from bitterness to disappointment or resentment to disappointment and from disappointment to engagement and engagement to satisfaction. But that's a lot of moving, you know, and, and, it, and it's never a pure line. I think it slides back and forth, to be honest. So when you feel yourself sliding more toward the, maybe some of the negative aspects, mm -hmm. how do you get yourself back on track? Still with that drive, still, okay, I'm gonna prove that I can do this, especially in the beginning. Oh, wow, in the beginning. You know, I, 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 I euphemistically say you bite the stick and hang on, and whatever comes to shake you off, you just clamp down. And honestly, I think it's more, you know, about your um, uh, stubbornness in the beginning. Because, uh, you're, you know, there'll be disappointments, there'll be people that um, uh, mislead you a bit, um, or, or at least you hear what you want to hear. Maybe they're not misleading. But, there, you know, we, we, we do this on faith, and we do it on hope, and not a lot of food. And uh, it, it, how you get through that, I personally, and, and in the beginning, it was good to have uh, other things to do during the week. I, I mean, to be able to work carpentry, to be able to, you know, to physically exert myself at something. I think that helped break up. Uh, some of the noise in my own head. I think that's what you have to find is something to ameliorate that noise. Because if you don't and it gets louder and louder and louder, it's crippling. And it, it, I don't care if it's the bitterness or the, you know, the fantasy <laughs> of what it's supposed to be. There's a great old saying, I think there's a, a, a wonderful songwriter named Eliza Gilkison, and in one of her songs she says, sometimes the big dream has to die for the little dream to thrive. And I think that's true for a lot of us. We come out with this big dream about what it's supposed to look like. And once you can let go of that, your little dreams can begin to th thrive. And, and some of that bitterness and resentment and stuff can go away. You can just go.